On this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq, coalition leaders have strong words for terrorists and airmen keep the troops flying high. These stories and more on today's FJI. Hello, I'm Petty Officer Matt Gleason. Welcome to this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. Multinational Force Iraq spokesman Brigadier General David Perkins is quoted as saying, if you are a terrorist in Iraq, you are not safe. Petty Officer Andre Roden has more. In a recent press conference, General Perkins was asked if coalition forces, along with Iraqi security forces, are focusing on just one terrorist group. Actually, we don't focus on any one particular uh, terrorist or criminal element out there. We are focused on anybody who tries to prevent the rule of law, tries to prevent peaceful life here in Iraq. We've, uh, so as the coalition partners with Iraqi security forces, uh, we are focused on al-Qaeda, special groups, criminals, regular criminals, anyone who is trying to um, excite violence, uh, trying to use illegal means or terrorist means to further their cause to turn Iraqi against Iraqi and actually just prevent the peaceful goal assistance of Iraqis. General Perkins went on to say there's been an 82 percent decrease in attacks this Ramadan, all due to the efforts of coalition and Iraqi security forces. Petty Officer Andre Roden, Baghdad. Communicating facts correctly helps the Iraqi police maintain the trust of local citizens. The IPs reviewed basic law enforcement techniques such as weapons training, combative and structure clearing techniques, and defensive maneuvers against small arms attacks. The training also focuses on informing the people of Baghdad about the IP's capabilities and keeping them informed of what the IP are doing for the people on a daily basis. In an ongoing effort to better Iraq, the future IP media advisors will serve to provide an avenue for IP station commanders to keep the public informed with the truth. Having functional and ready equipment can save lives and help complete missions. Air Force Staff Sergeant Robert Smith introduces us to one airman who keeps U.S. and Iraqi air crews mission ready. Air crews rely on their equipment to complete missions and potentially save their lives. The responsibility of maintaining air crew equipment belongs to the life support technicians. Technical Sergeant Sean Cox is the 770th Air Expeditionary Advisor Squad and life support non-commissioned officer in charge. Well, I think it's extremely important just because if they're to go down, basically it's our equipment that's going to save their life. Sergeant Cox works with her Iraqi counterparts on a daily basis ensuring air crew members can fly day or night. It, every day is different. It's not, we don't just come to work and do the exact same thing day in and day out. So it's exciting. Technical Sergeant John Hickman, combat air advisor to the Iraqi Air Force, knows the importance of having life support gear. If something bad were to happen while we're flying and we end up on the ground in a bad case uh, scenario, we have those life support technicians that take care of our uh, life support gear survival equipment. This is Staff Sergeant Robert Smith reporting from Baghdad, Iraq. Coming up, man's best friend proves his worth in a combat zone. Here's your raid report. Coalition forces caught three suspected members of the Qataib Hezbollah network about 25 kilometers east of Baghdad. The network is assessed to be a proxy of Iran and its members are believed to use improvised explosive devices. During a multi-day raid in Mosul, coalition forces captured four wanted men and 12 suspected terrorists. The 12 suspects are believed to be associated with a suspected terrorist cell. The Iraqi army captured a suspected al-Qaeda in Iraq member. The suspect is an alleged explosive expert and is believed to have plotted several kidnappings, murders and indirect fire attacks northwest of Baghdad and surrounding areas. Soldiers discovered an emplaced improvised explosive device in southern Baghdad. The IED was found next to a community school after receiving a tip from a concerned Iraqi citizen. And that's your rape report. I'm Petty Officer Andre Rosen. Here are the latest Operation Iraqi Freedom headlines. Sources claiming to be close to al-Qaeda say the terror group is attempting to recruit members of awakening groups by convincing them they were being abandoned by coalition forces. Al-Qaeda has supposedly ordered that sons of Iraq are to be approached and recruited rather than attacked. Iraq's Minister of Defense inspected new U.S. reconnaissance aircraft purchased by the Iraqi Air Force this week, and the minister said ground units are being trained to act on the information they provide. 
U.S. soldiers detained five criminals belonging to an Iranian-backed insurgent group in Baghdad. They have captured at least 30 members of the group, which smuggles weapons from Iran and conducts attacks in civilian neighborhoods. 21 women were among 700 new Iraqi police recruits who graduated from a training course and sworn into service in Diyala. Those are your headlines from around the region. I'm Petty Officer Venetia Vaughn. The U.S. Army Reserve takes a different kind of strength. The strength to help people one day and lead people the next. The strength to build confidence one day and build knowledge the next. The strength to improve your country one day and your career the next. The strength to be both a citizen and a soldier in the U.S. Army Reserve. There's strong and then there's Army strong. Find out more about the Army Reserve at GoArmyReserve.com. U.S. and allied forces have provided Iraq with new schools, bridges, and medicine, but not all of the services provided are tangible. Army Sergeant Ron Reeves introduces us to a number of coalition chaplains who are helping to serve the Iraqi community. Three British chaplains visited Bishop Imad of the Chaldean Catholic Church in Basra, Iraq. The Iraqi Army's Operation Charge of the Night security operation began in March. Bishop Imad said the Iraqi Army has, in his words, made a better situation in Basra. Christians remain free from attacks. The trip was mainly a courtesy visit to show support for Basra's Christian community. The Chaldean Church honors the Pope's authority but has its own traditions. Bishop to Her Majesty's Forces, the Right Reverend David Connor, visited Coalition Operating Base Basra days after the Chaldean Church trip. One, it's important we remember that there is a significant Christian community in Iran. Two, uh, that we uh, um, try to support that community. Uh, as, as much as we can through prayer and action. But that three, that we realize that uh, if we do that, uh, it's not um, uh, because we're self-serving, uh, but because through that community, we want to be of service to the whole of Iraq. In Basra, Iraq, for Multinational Division Southeast, I'm Army Sergeant Ron Reeves. U.S. soldiers rely on one another to complete missions. This teamwork is such an essential part of the armed forces that it even has its own term, the battle buddy system. Specialist Stephen Crowfoot reports on one pair of battle buddies and examines their unique relationship. He is a vital part of his team. Those that know him consider him an everyday soldier. Yet his team would say his hard work and dedication is not quite human. <laughs> These dogs are part of a military police unit at Camp Striker, Iraq, and play a huge role in the unit's mission. Working dogs are, I feel, essential, uh, just due to the, the fact that we have instruments that can do what they do, but it's so slow that it takes an instrument probably 45 minutes to an hour to clear a vehicle when a dog can have that same, that same job done in less than a minute. Soldiers train the dogs every day on different route-clearing missions. Once the handler receives the task, he releases the dog, and communication Good boy. Leave it. Good boy. helps to complete the job. I take my dog, I point him in a direction that I need him to, to smell for explosive devices, and I give him a command, and he searches that area. Due to the importance of the missions, the handlers and the dogs spend a lot of time together. This time really allows them to become a team. All dog handlers feel the same way about their dogs for the simple fact that the amount of time we spend together. I feel just like Sam as my brother. During the day, these dogs help save many lives, which makes it easy to understand why these work partners are also best friends. Reporting from MND Center, I'm Specialist Stephen Crowfoot. And that wraps up this edition of our program. Be sure to log on to mnf-iraq.com where you can learn all about the progress coalition forces are making throughout the country. If you have story ideas, we'd love to hear them. Just email us at fgi at iraq.centcom.mil. From all of us here at AFN and Freedom Journal Iraq, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.